Hi everybody, my name is Chef Ian Vare. You're watching The Green Mountain Chef. We have a wonderful episode for you today. So I decided to change things up a little bit. I was doing some research not too long ago and saw another uh, documentary on, uh, well, I won't say what channel it was, but uh, we're on Peg TV right now. At any rate, I saw a nice film about a man who lived 5,300 years ago. His name was Otzi. Otzi the Iceman. This fella was uh, discovered back in 1991 by some hikers traveling through the European Alps, right on the border in Italy, on the border of Austria. Otzi the Iceman. He was quite a spectacle for many scientists. Now, for this chef and Michael File, I like to get in the woods and find mushrooms myself, but this man, Otzi, he had a few mushrooms on him. And the mushrooms that Otzi had were medicinal. In fact, they were mushrooms that grow, for some of us, right in our backyard. Now, for myself, I've been studying mushrooms for 20 years. This is something that I am very comfortable with. This is something that I teach uh, on several venues. It's not something that I uh, play around with lightly. It's no game. It's a lot of fun. I'm a fun guy. So that's, that's how it goes. But at any rate, I like to use the National Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Mushrooms. I actually have several field guides that I've been studying for many years. Now, let's talk about these mushrooms. This first one, this is called a tinder conch. It grows on dead and dying birch trees. Interesting. This second is called a birch polypore. Go figure. It grows on dead and dying birch trees. Very interesting. The birch tree is extremely medicinal. So, what do these do for us? Well, Otzi, the Iceman, knew what they did for him. What they do is they keep our immune system balanced. They also have plenty of antioxidant qualities to release oxidation from our body. They do many other things. To be honest, it might be a nice idea for everyone watching this episode today to Google something about Otzi, to Google the tinder conch and the birch polypore to find out what they do for us because there are many other cultures around the world that use these types of fruiting body mushrooms to heal themselves. So, where does that bring us today? A little bit of fun, why not? Generally I'm here, you know, I'm a French trained chef, I like to talk about French methods. Sometimes I bring choice edible mushrooms into the studio and we work with them and we make a nice dish. Today, I decided to make a nice mushroom extraction. Some people say, eh, that sounds a little weird. And to be honest, a straight mushroom extraction, it is a little weird. They don't taste very good. It's, it's not something that I find appealing as far as the palate goes. Now, what are we here to do? We're here to extract the nutrients from these mushrooms and make them taste good. Why not? What if we decide to go out and buy a National Audubon Society field guide to North American mushrooms? What if we decide to start spending a little time in the woods rather than in the city? And we stumble on a few of these and we say, hey, maybe this Chef Ian guy, this Green Mountain Chef fellow, maybe he knew what he was talking about. Let's try it out. I really truly want to reiterate to anyone out there trying this, Make sure you have a mentor. Make sure you know exactly what you're doing. There are many mushrooms out there that can get us extremely sick. In fact, there are a few that are deadly. So I don't take this lightly. This is a very serious episode, but this is also a very serious subject matter for someone like myself. I attend the farmer's market occasionally. I have several friends who do the same and we feel the same way about these mushrooms because we know that there are other people around the world that are doing these same exact things with the same exact mushrooms, making extractions, ingesting them, keeping us healthy. So, let's see what we're going to do now. These guys are not very edible. Right here I have the tinder conch. almost like wood, nearly like stone. Now we have the birch polypore. I don't know if I want to eat these. 
So what do we do? Well, we make extractions. First, when we harvest them, it's extremely important to preserve them. How do we preserve them? Well, myself, I have a freeze dryer. If you can get your hands on a freeze dryer, it's a nice thing, because what happens is it preserves these, these mushrooms for 20 to 25 years. I have a lot of time to be able to use them. Now, they're a little expensive. Some people spend a lot less money and purchase dehydrators. Dehydrators work quite well, and your mushrooms will be preserved for several years. Maybe we don't want to go as far to do that. Some people have wood stoves. In the wintertime, it's nice to dry out some mushrooms on a wood stove. Many of us have ovens. And to be honest, you can put your oven on about 200 degrees and slice your mushrooms much like, we'll say, a quarter of an inch thick, we'll say. I'm not sure if we can see that on camera, but about a, about a quarter of an inch thick, okay? If we can slice these and put them on a sheet tray in our oven, a few hours, at least long enough to where they almost crisp, and then they're good for several years. So there's many different, um, many different ways to preserve these mushrooms. So what I have done is I've used my freeze dryer. Um, it's something that I do frequently with many of the mushrooms that I have, but they're not in a very different state than they would be had I used my oven, say. Okay? Um, another method that you can use that takes a good bit longer that I uh, neglected to say is you can dry them in the sun, in strong, strong sunlight, and that will actually enhance their vitamin D. So that's another way to try it. So it doesn't have to be something that, oh, this is too hard, this is too difficult, I can't do it. There's a lot of ways to do it. So I've got my tinder conch here, all right? Here was the, the original. And what I decided to do was slice him thin and dry him out, okay? No big deal. We can all have this. I have a big bag of them at home that I use. I, I actually make a tea that I'm going to make here on the air. I, I call it Iceman Tea. Go figure. Same mushrooms that Mr. Otzi had on him. So I have my mushrooms, my tinder conch, and these guys for sure are going to help my immune system. How many do I need? That's a good question. This is medicine, everyone. Doctors in our culture may not call it medicine, but there are cultures around the world who have viewed it as medicine for thousands of years. Now, I have been a bit of a guinea pig through the, through the years. Don't laugh at me. Um, <laughs> I know what it's like to eat too much, and I know what it's like to eat not enough. And at this point in my life, you know, I have found a nice, happy medium. And the truth is, is for a gallon of liquid, and I've got spring water here today, for a gallon of liquid, we only need a few ounces, okay, of mushroom, of dried mushroom, at the most, okay? You could put an ounce in, and it would be fine. So we'll say an ounce or two. I'm going to use two ounces today. Now, I only have a quart going right here, so that's not quite a gallon, so what I have to weigh this out to is only about a half of an ounce. Does that make sense? Did that break down fully? So one gallon, two ounces. One quart, which is a quarter of a gallon, a half of an ounce. So I have a half of an ounce here. I have spring water that is only simmering. I don't want a strong boil, 212 degrees. Okay, I don't want it, I don't want to just beat it up in this water. I, I want to slowly simmer it for an hour or so, to be honest. Okay, I like this to go for a few hours. Okay, these guys go in here. Doesn't seem like too much. Give them a little stir. And almost immediately, they begin to leach some color. Now you might ask, why do I need to cook these in water? Well, like I mentioned before, they're extremely tough. They're very hard. Their cell walls are made of a substance called chitin. And chitin is exactly what crustaceans make their shells out of. Think of a clam shell. Not something we want to eat. Not something you can think of making extractions out of very easily. So with mushrooms that are chitin-based, and basically all medicinal mushrooms have some level of chitin in them, we want to give them some surface area, which is why I sliced them and I didn't leave them whole, and we need some little time and a little temperature, all right? Hence, we're making our, our tea, our water extraction. So these are going to be going for a couple hours. We don't have a couple hours on the air here, but we do have the magic of television. 
So I got here a little early today, and I have another batch going. So this will all be fine. Trust me, everything will come right together at the end. Um, so my Tinder conch is simmering away nicely. Now, one thing I didn't mention about the Tinder conch that uh, was interesting with the Oatsy Iceman is it's postulated that he used this specific mushroom not necessarily just for his immune system, but to light fire. Quite interesting. Something that you might need if you were traveling through the Alps. The shavings of this, when given a spark to, ignite a fire. Very, very, very interesting. These are excellent mushrooms for anyone in the woods to know about. In case of an emergency, who knows, maybe we want to see what it was like to be an ice man when we're out camping in the woods. But uh, pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. So this guy can do a lot of things. He's simmering away. Let's move on to the birch polypore, which we will find on the exact same tree, the birch tree. These are small. Many, many times I find a birch polypore, and uh, let, me, let me see where I can put this, guys. They're pretty white, okay? Yeah, that's good. They have a small stem on them, and they're all, almost shelf-like, hoof, hoof-like, not quite as hoof-like as uh, the, the tinder conch here, but close, okay? And they're a polypore mushroom, all right? Just like the tinder conch. Many pores. They do not have gills. Okay? Very defining features in these mushrooms. So let's see. What are we going to do with this? Very, very similar as the tinder conch. I sliced them. And when these are fresh, they're not quite as tough as the tinder conch is. They're a, they have a bit more give to them. So I sliced these as soon as I got them. These were pretty difficult right when I got them. I've had good sharp knives, so someone might need a saw even to cut them when you're going to preserve them, believe it or not. Um, but at any rate, I, I sliced these guys. I got them preserved in my freeze dryer. Again, you could do it uh, using your oven or your dehydrator or the sun. Um, but I sliced these. I got these preserved. These are from last season. Okay, With my freeze dryer, they can last for years. All right, so good medicine to have around. Slice them to give them good surface area. I'm going to weigh out same quantity, about a half of an ounce. All right, looks good. Now, not quite as tough as the tinder conch, like I said, so I am actually going to give it even more surface area. There's many mushrooms that we can use, folks, to make a tea with. I found this, these two to be interesting because um, there's a nice story to go along with them. The Oatsy Iceman. Give it a Google. I think you'll find it interesting as well. OK, so we are going to pretend, <laughs> we're on television, sometimes we have to do that, that these tinder conks have been going for about an hour, we'll say, okay? Now, these birch polypores, they're not quite as tough, all right? They're not quite as thick, so they don't need as much time in the water. I like them to go for about an hour. So we're gonna pretend that the first one went in for an hour and it's ready, and the birch polypore was going in for about an hour. Give that a little stir now and again. I'm not sure if we can see this, overhead guys, but it is beginning to change color. It's, um, it's almost beginning to look like a, a green tea. Now, not quite as tasty as a green tea, I will say that. So, what do we do about that? There's a lot of things we can do. Today, I chose to Make a lemonade with it. Why not? Everyone loves lemonade. I picked up a lemon at the store, got some lemon juice ready to go, and I like to sweeten, it is Vermont, with good old Vermont maple syrup, another product that I'm able to find at the local farmer's market, with all kinds of other products uh, that are grown locally or forged locally. So uh, 
got to put my plug in for the farmer's market, everyone. Every Saturday, 9 to 2. Come on down and see us. I know. You might bump into me. There's a lot of other people that are there that would love to see you. Um, some people are selling mushrooms. Some people are selling, you know, uh, it could be corn on the cob. Okay? They, could, they have all kinds of lettuces, all right, microgreens. They have all kinds of, there's several people that sell maple syrup. There's all kinds of artisans. So come on down and see us. Got to put that plug in there, don't forget. Local farmer's market, Saturday, 9 to 2. So back to my tea here. A few hours making this, everybody. Meanwhile, I have another batch going just to the side. Like I said, I had been, I was here a little early. Got that going. Have my lemon juice ready to go. Have my maple syrup ready to go. Now, what do I do? I don't want to have these chunks of mushroom sort of hanging out in my tea. That, that's gross. Um, well, it's pretty easy. I'm going to strain them off, okay? And I have a double strainer. One is a larger strainer. One is, one's a bit smaller and more fine. We can also use a, a colander and then maybe run it through again through muslin, through cotton. Okay, that works quite well. Um, something like that is pretty much essential to make a nice, nice tea with. Um, you can also add this into coffee. All right, so once we were to strain these out, we could actually steep our coffee with this. Something that can be fun to do. Almost there. All right. Switch this up again. Again, we have a beautiful color. It's a nice, it's almost the color of honey or, or uh, like a nice deep honey or maple syrup, believe it or not. All right. Heat's good. Okay, how much lemon do we want to add into this? So, we have a quart, four cups. We don't want too much lemon, but we, I like a strong flavor like, like lemon. Um, sometimes I'll use, say, pomegranate juice, okay? Um, Sometimes uh, in the wild, I'll find, um, gosh, you can use wild mint. Um, lots of different things that are pr pretty strong. I mean, you kind of pick a flavor out that you enjoy that uh, will cover up the, the, the wood, the woodsy you know, flavor of, uh, of the mushrooms, because that's kind of what's in there. All right, so I'm going to start with, let's start small. Let's start with a teaspoon. All right, teaspoon of lemon. Let's see how we do with our maple syrup. I'm going to use about an ounce. That's two tablespoons of local maple syrup. This is a fun project, folks. I'm not going to lie to you. This is something that you could make large batches of. You could make a gallon of at a time. Keep in the fridge. All right. Let's give it a taste. These are wonderful, hot or cold. Let's see. See how we do. <sighs> to Mr. Otzi Iceman. That's why it's good to be a chef. It's not about following every single recipe, you get to create them. 
So this is pretty good, okay? This is something that I could easily drink on a daily basis. I personally like a little more lemon, so let's use more lemon. I came onto this show thinking to myself, let's have this be a lot like it would be for someone at home. I feel like we need a little more maple. Almost. Looks like I actually squeezed just the, exactly the right amount of lemon. So ultimately, a tablespoon of lemon juice. We need strong flavors to cover up these mushrooms, all right? They're not disgusting or anything, but they're woody, okay? Just a little woody. So some good lemon or some good citrus goes really well. Coffee goes great and just a skosh more maple. And I'm gonna call this my final recipe. So this comes out to a quarter of a cup of maple syrup with a tablespoon of lemon juice, four cups of spring water, a half of an ounce of the tinder conch, sliced, and a half of an ounce of the birch polypore, sliced. Make sure that we simmer these mushrooms. The first one, the tinder conch, for an hour, and then the second on top of it, the birch polypore, for another hour, all right? Oatsy knew what he was doing, but I guarantee you if he slingshot himself into time and got to taste it with some Vermont maple syrup and some delicious lemon juice, he'd think, boy, I wish I lived then. So folks, if this is interesting to you, I hope that you uh, learned a little bit. And I hope that potentially you will Google these mushrooms, the tinder conch and the birch polypore. Don't be afraid to take a look at the National Audubon Society. Remember, there are many people that are studying all of this medium. Okay, if you live in Vermont, there is so much to find in the woods. There is so much to experiment with and to make delicious, healthy food and beverages. Frequently right in your backyard that we can find. So come on down to the farmer's market. Stay tuned to Peg TV. We have all kinds of nice episodes here. My name is Chef Ian Vare. You're watching The Green Mountain Chef. Please stay tuned for our next episode. Have a great day.